So uh, I'm going to call the uh, Conway Select Board meeting to order on December 7th. It is 6.02, and we're conducting our meeting via Zoom, and it will be available on channel 12 and uh, possibly also channel 23, and it will be available on the FCAT um, video on demand YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and look, look up FCAT Media, you will find uh, all of the videos that are stored up on FCAT. Um, so minutes, everybody read the minutes. Yeah, they're great. Louise, I appreciated you did find some errors, so that's wonderful. Yeah, they seem good to me. So I'm gonna make a motion we accept the minutes. Second. Good, all in favor? Yeah. We all say aye. That's wonderful. Warrants. So we have two odd little warrants that the that our accountant asked us to push through. I'm going to mention them first, and then we'll do the regular warrants. So we, we had a, a, a payroll warrant of $215.46 and a deduction warrant of $60.11. I wonder if Conway's actual warrants ever were that low. Um, and then we have a vendor warrant of $131,413.82, a payroll warrant of $146,355.28, and a de payroll deduction warrant of $34,002.04. So I'm going to make a motion we accept those warrants. Yeah, I'm glad that they got out in time to re read them. So yeah, yes. Yeah. Yep. OK, all in favor. So I see everyone nodding their heads. Yep. So we'll call that unanimous. OK, minutes attended by select board members. So, so as usual, Erica, I guess you go first. Um, I, I have my first meeting with the um with life path for the age-friendly communities um yeah next monday so oh okay following meeting i'll have something to report <laughs> that's okay <laughs> oh i was looking forward to hearing about life path so. yeah so oh. the, yeah the first steering committee meeting is on monday morning so great and phil yeah yeah um, <laughs> so right after last week uh, the last select board meeting on november 23rd i hung up the phone and went right to the Board of Health meeting, and that was a very productive meeting. Um, and it, it was a new cast of characters. And, it, you know, it was interesting when I, I, I talked just a lot about the importance of making decisions based on metrics and not on feelings. Um, and, and uh, uh, you know, it was, it was a good, it was a good, interesting, interesting group of characters. The only thing was that there was two subsequent Board of Health meetings, which I'll get to, but in neither one of those was the Con did the Conway Board of Health have a quorum. Um, uh, but so, so that was the 23rd, the 20, uh, the 30th, um, at, uh, uh, we had, uh, had the, the, the carbon credit uh, uh, meeting with the Williamstown uh, gurus or the, the senior partners in the project. I guess I, we're the junior partners. Um, but uh, it's for, it's going to be us, Williamstown, and actually the New Ashford, which I honestly really struggle to find on the map. Yeah, um, but never uh, heard of that they town. probably say the same thing about Conway. Hey, mm -hmm. let's be honest. But um, but they'll be participating um, as well. And then we do have two landowners that wanted to be really public about their support. Uh, for this going forward, Jack Lockhead and uh, and uh, George Murphy and uh, and uh, yeah, so, so that's really good. Um, and we can talk about that. We will be talking about that more, I guess. Um, and then this December first, five o'clock was the front first Frontier Regional Budget Committee meeting, um, where one of the things that we tried to do was figure out how we were going to pay for the track 
which was the subject of the meeting at six o'clock that day uh, with the ca of the capital planning committee. Um, but the budget committee was uh, was just interesting, just in terms of the amount of unknown that it still exists, um, despite uh, Tom Hutchinson's fervent desire for budget uh, submissions in the imminent near future. Um, uh, I, I can report, though, there will be a capital project from the Frontier Regional, a, a capital uh, request, a, 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 for a capital warrant. Um, one of the things is the stage curtain that the fire marshal just notified us was uh, that the flame retardant has expired. So you must get a new stage curtain. Um, so that's the, and then there's a couple other things like that that are going to be the subject of a capital warrant, which once the Frontier Regional School Committee votes it out, which will be tomorrow, then Tom Hutchinson, you can expect to see it uh, cross your desk shortly, I would imagine. Um, and so, there so isn't that, enough money in E and D or, or. Um, I, the, the, there is enough. Okay. So, so the, 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 the track amount is look is good, is projected to be 800,000. Um, I had the, I had the, 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 uh, the idea of reducing the amount of the contingency, uh, that you, that you add in there, but, um, I was unable to to attract another vote for my idea, <laughs> um, uh, but the uh, so, so there's about a hundred and eighty thousand dollars shortfall between what we what the towns authorized the borrowing for and what the numbers of the track are. So there's the um, the belief is that it is a hundred thousand out of E and D, and then um the wow. school choice the school choice numbers this year came in again higher than projected and that's i get good for frontier bad for greenfield mohawk pioneer um gil montague and all these other struggling schools that um that that lose are losing a lot of kids to frontier um and and there has been uh you know frontiers had to say no this year to, yeah. to kids that wanted to come in um, so, uh, which lets you, which on the one hand, it says you're doing good, right? If you're viewed that way by other schools, uh, by, by families and other schools, you're doing good, but so, and, and it will allow us, uh, you know, out of the school choice monies that were unanticipated, um, it will allow to cover the rest that the, the other 80,000. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing is that the, the, well, we'll be talking about the, the the governor budget thing too, but and then the third at ten a.m. was a four board four four town board of health conference. Um, all the latest numbers, which were which were interesting, um, but once again Conway is unscathed. Um, although all around us is mayhem and madness, mm. and uh, um. I'm starting to see zeros for Conway for new cases, not less than five. It's it, like they're now publishing you're either zero or less than five or yeah, a real number. Some, there was some dispute about whether we should have been credited. I, 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 I had thought that, that there was a, a, an undisputed case uh, a one, but that there was some thought that the the one or two others that they accredited to what what but uh, yeah um people, so are we, are we zero or less than five somewhere in between uh, <laughs> but i have seen conway at zero on a number yeah, of if, recent reports if the state says zero then yeah they, they are infallible don't you know uh, <laughs> no. uh and, and, well we have zero current cases but yes. but we have had two two known cases in the past. So if you're counting cumulatively, it would be two. But within the last 14 days, it might well be zero. But they never used to say zero. They would still just say less than five. But yeah. now they're printing zero. So that's... Yeah. So, so credit the, we deserve. But the, the Thursday meeting, um, the t the con that conference featured um, those of us from the school uh, perspective and Darius and, and the nur you know, Met nurse Meg saying, you know, you, we need to do this transparently. You have to have public participation. You can't make these decisions like where nobody, that, that nobody knows it's even happening. 
that are stakeholders in it. Um, uh, and uh, so, so which led to the public meeting the following day, um, the evening, Friday evening was the Four Town Board of Health Select Board meeting um, on the 4th. And, and uh, that, you know, that, that actually had 88 people dialing in to participate in it. Um, however, the Board of Health made their decision first at the beginning of the meeting, then they invited public comments. Uh, and uh, um, I was given a, a, a short sampling of the social media reviews of the, that meeting and they were not kind. Um, uh, so, yeah. And this is all over keeping the kids home after Thanksgiving. Uh, well, over the so there's certain groups the 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 CPAC the the um, law I don't know what you want to call them the parent advocacy group for um, for 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 kids that need special special needs kids. Yeah. So and they actually are part of a whole statewide thing. So they were um, upset that the after week after Thanksgiving was canceled at. Because they all have the the the, the you know the four of whatever the five or fours or the four or five I forget what the number is the 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 individualized learning plans that require one on one or you know physical you know physical interaction with a human being every day, um, and and so they were concerned that that you know that that week was taken and then they were really concerned with the the. Um, uh, you know the, the what that says about the week after th Christmas, about the week after President's weekend. You know, all, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then there was a lot of the teachers were on there, and a lot. Um, I mean, it's the same. It's the same kind of thing that we've been talking about for months. Um, but the Board of Health did get sort of a taste of the community passions involved. Um, uh, but 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 basically, they, we, we they we're back to live in-person hybrid um, learning at all of our schools and um, and there's not going to be another really review of that unless the numbers suggest otherwise without that we're going to be going what three more weeks before there's another board of health four town meeting um, but yeah so those but you know so this is definitely the defining issue of this year my goodness yeah. People get really worked up about it on both sides. It's really remarkable. You can't, <laughs> you cannot make a decision that can make more than half the room happy, no matter which decision you make. It's remarkable. Um, so yeah, that was my meeting. Wow. Two weeks. Well, so uh, I had three meetings, but none of them all that exciting. We had a conservation commission meeting we had uh, another cable meeting to, you know, look at, uh, to talk about strategy and talking to Comcast. And then, you know, two weeks from today, Comcast will be at our next meeting. Comcast will be uh, coming to the meeting and we'll hold a, what's hopefully going to be a short hearing as they accept our license. But other than that, we haven't heard back from them. And, and then the, Frontier Capital meeting. So, but so the one thing I liked about the Frontier Capital meeting was poor Darius at the end of the meeting said, man, I can't tell you how good it feels to talk about something other than COVID. <laughs> and, and that's regular money and, and decisions. Yeah, I feel the same way talking about the carbon credit thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, right, it really is, right. it's, just, it's a completely different thing. And it's forward looking yeah. and it's hopeful looking. And it's just so, so, you know, so nice to talk to people about something like that. Okay. So next we have public comments, but I don't think we have any public here. I, I was asked to make a comment um, uh, by, for, by Peter Engelman um, about the river thing, the parking along the river, just a suggestion. Okay. Uh, that they they have a big concern with the bank erosion on um, South River. 
Well, no, it's the bank erosion on um, uh, the the snake hole. Yeah, but of the road uh, of the the bank right by the road. That's Reeds Bridge Road, the lower part of Reeds Bridge Road. Um, when people, because of all the people that were parking on the river side of the road, it accelerated the problem. And they feel that it's only a matter of time before a good part of the slope gives out and takes the road with it, or some of the road. And he said the town did major, some major work on this part of the road back in 2010, he thinks. But maybe there's a way to work with Ron Sweet and come up with a plan to better protect the bank um, next to that, right next to the road by somehow roping off the riverside and maybe indicating you can only park on the opposite side. This, is that something that could perhaps be workable? If I'm right, I'm guessing Ron is on a call. He, he may be eating dinner now or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm know. on. Hi, Ron. I'm on the call. Hi. Did you hear that comment? Uh, I didn't hear the last part that he said. That, that um, he, concerned about the slope next to the road on Reesbridge Road next to the snake hole? Um, uh, yeah, I got that part. I didn't hear the very that, last part of what that, you said. That um, wouldn't, w would, uh, would that bank and, and the road itself be better protected by roping off the riverside and doing parking on the opposite side? Um, Personally, I haven't seen any any change over there in since I've been highway boss. I mean, as far as the bank, that slid probably 2012 um, because of the big trees on there. Um, I haven't seen any change, and I honestly don't see any real threat to the road because the, there's no longer any trees on that bank. Um, so I, I, unless they're talking a different spot than what I, that I've seen, um, I, I personally don't see an issue over there, that any major concern that we should be addressing. All right. I mean, we've we've talked about it with the has hazardous um, plan that we have for the town. That's I'm pretty sure that's on there as far as the bank erosion goes, but other than that, it's, I don't see a threat to the immediate threat to the road. The parking doesn't seem to have, I haven't even actually seen anybody park there. So I'm not sure what they're talking about. It, uh, like I said, maybe he's talking about something different than what I've seen. So do you think we can get some so pictures? If, or, no, I didn't get or, any pictures. No, 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 but he, maybe Peter could take some. All right. Or maybe I can just meet with him. I mean, I'd be up for that. Okay. I'll let him know. That'd be great. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. That was public comment. That's good. So, Tom, budget update. Yeah. Uh, I've got about a third of the um, the budgets, uh, the budget proposals from uh, different departments in for FY22, the uh, deadline is December 24th, so that's actually doing pretty well. Um, just thought I would I would mention. Um, uh, I, I I think I did last time that we're we're on track with FY21 tax receipts so far. Um, you'd probably have been following the uh, the budget things. I, I sent a few pieces out to you. There's the new cherry sheet from the conference committee. Um, that you know shows Conway's level of um, state aid, and you know it, it's just it's it's pretty consistent. We we don't get a lot of state aid. Uh, the majority of our state aid is in uh, Chapter 70. You know, um, there's some unrestricted general government aid, but that that's the same as it as it always has been. Um, School choice receiving tuition was up twenty thousand, not not a, not a big deal. Um, so, our state aid is is not looking bad, and our local revenues are not looking bad for FY twenty one. So that's that's good news, and we've got three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in in free cash. So, all of that's looking good. Of course, FY twenty two is still a wild card. Um, 
But yeah, and, and you know, there's back and forth about some kind of a relief package. But at least the current um, the current package has something that that the previous versions did not, which was aid to state governments, um, and that would you know that would ease things up further. So a lot of people's concern is, well, you know, what's the effect going to be on on uh, the hospitality industry? A lot of towns get meals tax revenue. We don't get that. So uh, the main question we're having is long-term unemployment, whether that leads to uh, people, um, you know, renters not being able to make rent and things like that. And, and again, uh, a lot of that just depends on, on uh, whatever kind of federal program comes out. So things are pretty much in stasis, but looking as good as possible for Conway at this point. It's it really the, the finances do not look bad at this point. So the long term effects are anything we have to worry about, um, and a lot of that is unemployment leading to uh, you know people not being able to pay rent and therefore landlords falling behind in taxes. That that kind of a, a cascade effect, but. Uh, so far, um, there's 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 not a lot of evidence that that's affecting Conway greatly at this point. Um, but I will continue to look for. I haven't seen unemployment figures for Conway in particular for some time, so I'll I'll continue to to monitor that situation as we go forward. The, yeah, the unemployment figures for Conway shot back up, and they're they're looking quite grim again. Um, Back back to the you know thirty percent of the workforce kind of grim, so you know, along with the rest of the state, and so um, you know. But so so the one thing that I wanted to talk about, like budget wise, is you know um, last year we did the way, municipal wage freeze where we saved sixteen thousand dollars by freezing everybody uh, all the employees' wages, and I was more gung ho in favor of that than anybody. Because at, at the time I was um, leading the town's negotiations with our teachers unions um, uh, and aids union and, and uh, yeah, so, and it was that was it was kind of uh, important to, to on that perspective. Plus, at that exact time that we were doing that is that that was really grim. All the forecasts were really <laughs> grim. They're, they were talking about a ten billion dollar state shortfall. Re revenue shortfall or more 10 to 15 billion. And, um, and, you know, so at, at the time it looked quite grim and we asked all of our employees to take a wage freeze, but it turns out that it wasn't, it, it turns out that all of our worst case scenarios did not come to pass. And like, uh, my, my, you know, I've been thinking about this because I pushed more for that wage freeze, you know, as, as much as anybody, I, I recall being quite insistent about it. Um, and, 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 but it, but I think I was right at that time to do that. But, you know, I think now I'd like to talk about doing something about that, because it may come a time in the very near future where our fiscal circumstances are actually quite grim and we will need to do a wage freeze. Um, but we're not at that right now. And, you know, maybe there's enough to do something, you know, I'm, because at this point you'd be talking about like a lump sum or whatever. And I'm not, I, I, you know, is, can we do something to make up for our, uh, you know, since we're, to, you, since you mentioned the term relief package, can we do something in this area um, that would acknowledge that, you know, that the sacrifice while we are grateful for it wasn't necessary, but it might be in the near future. So, Here's a little bit now, but um, watch out for next year. <laughs> Can we do well, something you know, like that? Let, yeah, sure. Let, let, let's wait. Let's wait till um, you know further into the budget discussion, um, and and you know that's like a February, March kind of uh, topic to take up. You know, we'll have, we'll we'll have we'll have a better idea of vaccines and stuff like that at that point too. All right. Great. New business. 
So our first item is uh, uh, letters regarding town property on or near Fournier Road. So we, we have a proposal from uh, Tom Pleasant to, it sounds like, do some land swap or boundary moving. I believe it's the son, it's the son is the property owner, Ken. Okay. I believe it's actually Ken's proposal. Well, you're right. It does say Ken Pleasant. Yeah. So, so I was really thrilled that Ron was going to be on the call. Ron, do you want to talk about this or do you want us to talk about it and you chime in? How do you want to do this? I mean, I mean, we've, I assume we've all read the proposal. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd like to hear from, from Ron, cause it, it seems like, um, I mean, my well, understanding Ron didn't think that it was particularly advantageous to the town, but I just like to hear. Um, well, there's several reasons why I think that this is not good for the town. Um, but first off, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure why the town would be willing to give up any of their property in the first place. But um, the the road, Fournier Road, that goes to his driveway. After where the road ends and the part that he's asking to for the town to give him that property, that is our access to the left side of our property. We don't have access any other way to that part of our property. Um, right now we have issues with being able to get to the well, the, the school well. When Greg Rose owned it and we had to access it, he let us go across his property. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen now. Or I'm assuming. I, I, I shouldn't say that it won't. I don't know. Um, but the things that have gone on down there and the work that he has done on town property is concerning to me. And I've, I've brought it to the select board's attention, but um, to give up for the town to give up that property just seems ridiculous to me. Um, Ron, can the I other ask thing is, Oops, go ahead. Sure. So, so I mean, there's two pieces to what we're talking about. One is that piece of property, the piece of property that's to the west and the north of his house. Correct. And then the other is what goes on over on the east side of the sheep barn. Correct. The right of way. And are they related at all? I don't. I, I, mean, I don't see. I don't. No, I don't, I don't believe. They don't appear to me to have anything to do with each other. No, it, it, they don't. Okay. But uh, I was just responding as far as the first letter that I have from him. Yeah. In okay. front of me. Um. This. To speak on that side there, I've asked to move the right of out of to move the driveway to our salt shed. I've asked previously asked to move it because of the concerns I have being that close to his property, to his building, and with his children, he's now put a driveway on the south side of his um, building, the old sheep barn that comes out onto our right of way. And it's kind of dangerous trying when we're coming down by there. So I've, I've actually asked previously of moving the driveway over off out of his property. But as far as us giving up the right of way, we have, we have utilities that run through there. And I don't see that that's a, um, a I don't think we should be giving that right of way up because of that. And also somebody else are, has a right of way through there too. So we wouldn't be able to give that right of way away. I mean, so he's always going to have to deal with that anyways, so does, unless he can get the person that has a right of way to abandon the right of way. But uh, who else, I'm just out of curiosity, who else has a right of way there? Well, the town gave right of way to Gary Leshesky when they did the, uh, bought the property over um, behind the school. 
So they have he has right of way through that right of way and through the town property to get to his property. So he's so so we we could solve his problem of not wanting the trucks to come down very close to the sheep barn by moving by building a new driveway on our property. Yes. Are, are there setback rules about a driveway on your property, or can they go right to the edge of your property? They can go right to the edge. I've but, I've actually talked to the school about moving the driveway over, and I said that, and they're they're fine with it. But I did tell them that we would put a fence yeah. on the mm -hmm. school side of the driveways, and they were they were receptive to the um, proposal. They had no issue with it, really. Um, would, would we have to take that tree down that's right on the north side of that corner? Actually, we'd just have to take a couple limbs off and we would be fine going between the two trees. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I think there might be three trees there. One of them is going to have to come down shortly anyways because of the it's getting pretty dead. The, the one closest but to I, the I believe house is in good shape. The, the tree closest to the schoolhouse is in good shape. Yes, I believe that one's in good shape. Yeah. It's, I think there's two by the property line, by the pin. And one of them, I'm pretty sure, is getting pretty dead. And he he showed moving the, the edge that, that leads up to that driveway in toward the, sh the sheep shed a little bit. Well, what he's trying to do from what I can, what it appears is he's trying to get, he wants, he doesn't want the town to have any right of way through his property. So he's moving that in so that we can go in the existing entrance to go to the left side of the transformer like it does now, because he owns right to the transformer. Yep. So he, what I'm guessing is he's proposing moving that line over so the driveway can maintain there that entrance. That's what it appears. I I I say we move the driveway and we keep the keep our um, right away. Just kind of abandon the use of the driveway for driving through, as far as the town's concerned. I, I like don't know. I'm, it, doing that it, would make him happier. It, maybe not. Uh, so I, did, I think he, that, you know, does he want to I honestly to believe over? that we could move the, talk to Gary Leshesky and move the right of way out of his, off his property. So that would give him more, more, he wouldn't have to worry about uh, somebody having to drive through by his sheep barn there. Yeah. But well, and that's after building a new driveway that Gary could use. Right. So, I mean, when, when I look, listening to you, Ron, so the, the cost of building that driveway, putting the, the childproof fencing up, knocking down the one disease tree that has to be knocked down and taking limbs off of another. So you add those numbers up, and then what's the co versus the cost to the town of a property swap? But but Phil, his proposal involves building that driveway anyway. Correct. Uh, yeah. His proposal, there is no really no property swap what he's looking for that I can see other than that first little entrance between one and two. Yeah. I mean, his proposal says to add an additional driveway along that property line so we right. have unrestricted access to the sheep barn. I, honestly, what he's proposing, I don't see any gain for him. Privacy. What do you mean, privacy? That's what he said. I asked him the same question. So why, why do you want to do this? So, he, so he's going to put a fence? up along the town property 
But, but Phil, between are you one and about, three. I don't know. Phil, do you mean privacy because of that property to the north and west of his house? He said privacy and safety for the first family. It just, you know, he wouldn't have to worry about anything. That was his. But if we built another driveway, we would be well away from him. Uh, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for moving the driveway. Honestly, I don't like that we have to go right by. I mean, all it would take is a kid come out of his out of his sheep barn or something as we're coming by with a plow or something and or the driveway to the his driveway that he his new driveway that he installed i honestly i w i would much rather that we weren't that close to the building yeah as far as as far as the other land I, i'm 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 i can't see how the town could entertain that idea of giving away right. that property. Right. So I don't know that we have to vote on anything. I mean, we could, but Tom, do you think you have enough information to write him a letter and as a response to his letter? Um, I, I maybe I would say write him a counter well, proposal. Okay, summarize. Uh, no. I, no, there there have been a lot of different ideas and no decisions that I've heard. Yeah, I I mean I I almost feel like I would like I I don't feel like I can weigh in on this without actually like physically going. I mean I know the property obviously, but like being there physically, knowing what the issues are, what and the, like having someone actually show me like what the proposal is. I mean my my gut says you know this is a this is a homeowner. This is a taxpayer here in Conway let's keep them happy and yeah um and I and yeah definitely like if if there's a way to separate you know the town business you know like I, I think it's always probably preferable to like not have a right away on private property you know um but I feel like I don't have enough understanding of the issues and the solutions to really make a decision at this point well, the, uh, the changes that we're talking about would still have a right of way under what's now the driveway, whether he would keep it a driveway or do something different with it. But but because there are u utility lines, electric right. lines that go right. under that driveway. So we would need a right of way at least for that. Right. Not to drive over it. Right. But exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I guess what I'm thinking. Yeah, but you've got to be careful what you do there because you've got to be able to maintain that if something happens. And if you just, I mean, I, um, no, I would say I we, we can leave the right of way exactly like it is today, but build another driveway correct. so we wouldn't commonly drive over it, over his driveway. correct. I uh, I would I would be all for that. That's what I was looking to do before. Um, to move the driveway, but not get, abandon our right of way. Just Erica, not. Did you want to find a time you could go and maybe meet Ron there and look at it? Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, well, it sounds like you said, like, we don't have to make a decision now. I guess my point was more that I'd like, I don't feel like if we have to make a decision now, I don't feel like I am yeah, no, fine. prepared to make a decision. So, um, and, but I would I'd be, be more than willing. I'd be more than willing to meet with anybody to because I kind of understand the land there pretty well, yeah. what he's asking yeah. for. Yeah. I mean, I guess um, if, if, if we're being asked to make a decision, I don't feel qualified to make a decision right now. So, um, but so if we're not, then... We need to reply to his note. Okay. Uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be today. It could be, but okay. in, so maybe in two weeks, we can all go and look at the property and and talk about it a little bit more and 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 sort of phrase what might be uh, uh, what our proposal is for solving, you know, this problem. Yeah, that would be um, that would be very that would be preferable mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, to no, great. Have a little more information before making the decision. That's all well, one thing is, you, and then also you, you know, could we, have a you could have a site visit between now and the next select board meeting, and then discuss it at the select board meeting. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what fine. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, you now, know, Erica, you you work during the week, right? So 
I do, but I, but I, I work from home now, so I'm very flexible. <laughs> Lunch. Um, you know, okay, Phil, uh, Phil, if you can forward uh, Ken's uh, contact information, I can I can try to set something up with him. Sure, and you know, just just so you know that um, Ken and, and Tom were driving past when I was outside the one day, and they pulled over and and said that they were thinking about this, and I said, you know, first first put your ideas in writing because they didn't have anything in writing, and I couldn't visualize it. And then they came, then they came back and drew a little thing or whatever. And I said, bring it to the select board, but. The other thing that I said was that, look, you know, that the remedy pro probably won't be with the select board because the select board has other, con you know, it's not just what a single private landowner wants. It's also what's the best interest of the town as an institution and how, you know, if, if a town department head says the idea is ridiculous, then that, you know, the, 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 um, the, that, that carries a certain amount of weight. Um, well, they, they, they seem to recognize that. I mean, the letter said that, you know, we realize this might be a thing that has to go before town meeting. So, but, but, but that anybody that has any idea of something of this nature can get 10 signatures and get, make it their own warrant article and then stand up and, you know, the, 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 the select board doesn't always produce the results that somebody wants. And so that was my whole point to them too, that, um, you know, you can, anybody, anybody can petition select board for any kind of something like this, even though they would have to get some kind of super majority at town meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I said town meeting doesn't have the fondest of memories of land swaps these days, but. No, I, I think it's in all of our interest to sort yeah. of make ease this ongoing tension a bit, uh, you know, and Ron would like that more than anyone, I think. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, and. I'm not sure I see why we should give up all of the other land because of what looks like this problem over near the eastern, or the old entrance when we rented the sheep barn, which we don't do anymore and we don't need to get into the sheep barn anymore. Oh. Well, a site visit will show you some of what, why he's asking for that extra land. Yeah. Because oh, okay. he has nothing, no land in front of his house what the where the point of your road used to go by the, the the property lines like 10 feet in front of his house so i'm i'm assuming that that's why he's asking for more land there was to give him kind of a yard behind away from the school and all that and what's the land like on the north side of his house? Is it a big slope? Does it does it slope up? Is it? It's not a slope, but it's also open land. It's a slope up, but it's open land. Uh huh. You know, it's not wooded. Yeah, yeah. So if just this is just a like a technical question, if we go there for a site visit, if the three of us, the select board members, are there, do we have to like have our phones on and record <laughs> record our conversation? I mean, I don't, I like no, um, yeah, th this is a non-deliberative meeting. It, it's just to gather facts, and, and that would be the purpose of having it before the regular select board meeting where you'd discuss the results of what you'd found out. Yeah. All right, thank you. So, so, Erica, do you want to arrange that meeting, and Phil and I will figure out how to get there, if we can? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I guess would I arrange that with Ron? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That'd I can do great. that. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> Good. Good. Okay. Next item. Uh, we have some stipends to approve. So we have stipends for Murph, for Joe Colucci, and for the three of us. And we did and, talk. And if you, yeah, if you do them all together, there's there's no problem with anything. It's it's all fine. So Still we talked earlier about the danger of somebody turning down their stipend, although we don't actually have to take it, but this is whether we would be budgeting for it. So, so we should, you know, we're really approving budgeting for these, for the stipend. Uh, no, this is approved paying, right. Um, you actually don't have, wait a minute, let me look at the stipends. Hang on. There 
Yeah, Jan um, did not go by the amended stipend where you did not get your money. Um, that said, the Finance Committee has not yet um, met to approve uh, the restitution of your FY21 stipend. So I would say um, approve your own uh, on the condition that the Finance Committee approve them. Um, and I'll try to get Alan to have a meeting, you know, before the end of the year. I, I think Jan's planning to pay these out uh, at the in the in the next warrant. So this warrant item is not for approving next year's stipends. No, it's for approving cur the current payout of people who get stipends. Uh, the, these particular people. Okay. It's for this year, not for next year. Yes. Um, and, well, hang on. Let me, let me think about this for a second. Um, yeah, right now, um, I think there's enough money in the select board budget to pass it. There, there, there isn't enough in the, uh, yes, there is. Um, there isn't enough money in the in the stipend sub account, so um, Alan would have to get moving on that at some point. But what? So what about the others for um, the the payments for not select board members? As you said, we could approve them all at once, and that would be easier. But if this is complicated because we're select board members, can we approve the stipends for the two other people? Uh, yes, and. Um, I would uh, just give me one second, and I'll. Uh... Well, Tom, why don't you think about that, and we can go on to the next item, which I think is less controversial. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just checking to see, and and. Um, Yeah, that would um, that would put your account into deficit, but it's yeah. yeah. So appro uh, approving the others would be would be best. Now I've been trying to get Alan to have this call now for a month, um, so I'm I'm really going to push him now. Uh, but if you could approve the other two, that would help, and we'll just put the others on uh, for the next warrant. Sound good? Done all right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, so we're so we're I, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the stipends for Murph and for Joe Colucci. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that a second. Yeah. I heard a second. Okay, and everybody's shaking their heads, so I think we have unanimous nodding. We're, we're nodding our heads. Nodding our heads. Yeah, 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 nodding. That's a better word for it. Okay. So the next item has to do. License renewals. So this has always been very uncontentious. Renewals for Baker's Country Store, for J and J Auto Sales, and J and J Mags Antiques, and Oesco, and for Vites Garage. So everybody good with those? I move that we approve all of those license renewals. I'll second it. So all in favor, and we're all nodding our heads once again. I just know with sadness how you don't see the ones from Langdervins and you don't see Holly Barn and yeah, yeah. Well, soon we'll have one for a, what's a new liquor store. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Store. A packy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, another packy. We can use that. Okay. Um, and Phil, are you going to talk with this carbon credit plan? Do you want to talk? Do you have more about that? Yeah, so um, the, the 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 meeting with the Williamstown folks I thought went really well. Um, we did get a, a lot of information, and I thought in general they seemed like absolutely normal, sane people that you can communicate with, and all is all is good. So I, I was very pleased with all that, um, and you know the. the um, we definitely are partnering with the right group and we're just sort of in the right place at the right time. Um, and, and it's, uh, but, but, you know, as, as, as they said, we, 
we need Conway to participate in this. They need our acreage for their own, for their project to go through. Um, and the more acreage that you have in, in it, the, the more the revenue. Um, so the, you know, and, and we did find out more about the history of the other project that we were, you know, uh, you know, that, that caught my eye initially in that initial report when it, said, oh yeah, Holyoke, whatever, Agawam, well, I forget the West West Field. Field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 they, that they split a check for $2 million. Ever since I saw that, <laughs> uh, that, that I, you know, to be perfectly honest, that's what, you know, I was like, ooh, Conway, $2 million, yeah. So when we had that meeting a yeah. while ago with Deerfield, they sounded yeah. like they were very interested. They, they are and, very interested. And, um, you know, that, um, but to tell you the truth, I. We can get to fifteen hundred with just Conway, um, uh, you know, it, it, like no, like no problem. That okay. and that's that's the small one page list. And I have to tell you, like I I did um, with with Tom's help help get the record. Uh, I called it the Conway, um, the the Conway Hundred Acres Club. Um, <laughs> but so so it's a, it's just a relatively small list of people in that have, and it's not even a, a, a complete list because it's only list individual parcels. So there's people that could own multiple parcels that would push them up over a hundred. So this is just the people that own individual parcels of over a hundred. Mm. Um, and just with that, um, um, actually everybody I've talked to has been really in favor of it. So, uh, and uh, all across the political spectrum, which was interesting too. And, um, you know, and, and because basically these are all people that ha already have forest management plans for one reason or another with 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 a, 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 a size of a far, you know, privately owned forest of that amount. They've all had to have forest management plans done already. So so they wouldn't have upfront costs of entering into the program. They would just more or less have to promise to abide by their forest management plan, which they're already doing. Mm -hmm. So. It, and and for that they get paid and it might not be you know it might not be a thousand dollars an acre like i was hoping it might be a tenth of that um but uh but still that that adds up and that's something that's um so yeah i'm, I'm toying with that because um deerfield's not conway and and, uh, you know, we could, you know, Deerfield, Deerfield's not even part of the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership. And we would, we would be helping Deerfield out. But I feel like I do that a lot already in a lot of different areas. Um, right. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, so, so I've been toying with the whole idea of just making this a strictly Conway thing, especially if the you know, if the, if the landholders that are like over 300 acres, if we get one or two of them, I mean, that, then, um, then we're at 1500 with, with just, with just a handful of people participating. Um, and, and be a lot whole, easier. <laughs> right. And, and the whole question that, that came up with the, in the Williamstown meeting was, you know, what's, you know, when they were suggesting a threshold initially of like 10 or 20 acres, um, but, you know, but they also were suggesting that there's going to be a phase two or a step two after this step one um, and, and hopefully a step three after that. So, you know, if people have to pay for uh, or, 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 you know, a forest management plan, then, you know, you, you need a certain amount of I, I don't know what the, the, the law says, whatever, what, where it comes a point where it costs you more to do a forest management plan for your 20 acres than it does to then you'd get back into carbon credits. So I don't, I don't know about yeah. how that would work out for the smallest landowner. Um, but there is uh, also a possibility, I did speak with somebody from one of the uh, agencies that are associated with the Franklin Land Trust, um, um, the Mass Woodlands Institute, and they have someone that's, uh, very, that is very keen on assisting this project in any way. And so I'm going to be putting in a request for grants from them to pay for small landowners' <laughs> forest management plans. Um, so uh, 
we'll see whether that wh where that goes. But um, and that's only if we, it can be if, if there's a realistic possibility that it might they might say yes. But um, so yeah, so everybody I've talked to seems like you know I, I don't know whether it's just me or whatever, but it's just something besides COVID and taxes that, that it's nice to talk about. Just yep. like Darius was talking about the track. There's yeah. anything to talk, anything but talking about the pandemic reality is, is just really nice. So Thank I don't know. What, okay. uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's about right. Items not anticipated. Anybody, Tom, are there any items this week? Yes, we did uh, get, we were approached by another license holder who also wanted half off his license fee. And I thought, um, well, I thought that this would be a good decision to take to the select board. So um, it turns out that um, Louise did some uh, work for me here and um, if you exclude the Conway Inn, the total for all of the license revenue that we get at this point is only $280. So half of that would be $140. We'd be losing $140. Um, but if you wanted to cut all of the licenses in half, uh, that would be entirely possible. And um, you wouldn't be singling out the Conway Inn. That would be a, a policy benefit. And uh, you'd make all the other license owners happy. Um, it's not a lot of money, but it's a little bit. So uh, maybe that gesture of goodwill that you made towards the Conway Inn could be extended. Do we have a budget? I mean, it's, it's $140. Yeah, that's OK. That seems I think we can do it. <laughs> It, that that is revenue that that we projected we would get that we're not going to get this year, but it's true. It's not much money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm... One time only pandemic discount. Get it while it's hot. I'm not hearing big nose here. So, no. No. So somebody want to make a make a, I make make a motion that we discount everyone's license fees fifty percent. I'll second it. Sounds great. And I'm seeing nodding of heads again. So. Tom, that's a great suggestion. We don't even have to know uh, who the other person was. Now everyone. Yep. Although I don't mind separating out the Conway Inn. I mean, it's a very high license fee and especially what they give back to the town. Tom, do you have an update? Uh, yes, I do. Um, in committee news, I was made aware that the Council on Aging is planning a dinner at the Whateley Inn. I wrote expressing concern due to the pandemic and Pat Lynch replied saying that the inn has a safe capacity set and safety precautions will be taken by all attending. In other years, it's been a buffet, but no self-serve this year. It was up to individuals to decide whether they wanted to sign up, and there was no problem filling all the spaces available. I, um, Council of Aging. I find it hard to go. I've known Pat Lynch for ever, and I trust Pat Lynch's decisions. Yeah. But, uh, Tom, I, I saw that in the warrants that we signed, it was a payment of 125, I believe, to the Waitley Inn. It just stuck out in my mind as was like, wow, wait, the end. Um, but I see now yeah. why that payment was made. So And that's it? That is exactly. $125 to the wait, the end. That's it? Uh, <laughs> I, I think that that's probably to reserve the space. And then, you know, individual people will pay directly. OK. I trust that. Uh, in, yeah. Um, in departmental news, <clears throat> Uh, as I mentioned, the state legislature passed an FY21 budget on Friday and sent it to the governor. The numbers look sufficient for municipalities. The, the budget's actually going up, um, which is a little surprising from what it was going to be. Uh, but Conway's not going to be getting a lot more money. Uh, 
I am pleased to report that we are receiving $4,000 from Maya in risk management grant funds. 2,000 of that is for ultraviolet disinfecting equipment for Frontier, which, was, which fully funded our request for that. And $2,000 is for additional road safety signage and related equipment, such as cones. Uh, that was not fully funded. Uh, we had asked for an additional trailer to put the equipment in, but we got one a few years ago and did not get an additional one this year. Uh, I'm less pleased to say that we were not successful in our Mass Works grant application for further paving for Shelburne Falls Road or for our Community Compact IT grant. The assessors wanted a tablet and related software to be able to more efficiently transfer field data to their GIS system. Uh, the feedback we got on that was that it was not sufficiently innovative. Um, they looked at, on that as more of a usual operational expense, and they're looking to fund innovation in this particular um, IT grant that we applied for. Um, we thought it was innovative. It was innovative for us. Yeah. Um, in better news, our FEMA pre-disaster mitigation grant for slope stabilization on Delabar Avenue has been moved forward to the next phase. Uh, what, uh, we've made one more tweak from our engineer, which should suffice to put it into competition. It's been a very long process. Uh, I just posted before this meeting a uh, final opportunity to review and comment on the project. Uh, that's on the website and out front. Tom, is this farther I, than we've gotten in the past? Yes, much farther. Great. Uh, I got a request for the Forest Stewardship Zoom hearings to be, a made, to be made available to the public. Since they're too large for our current website subscription, I asked FCAT to post them, and the videos of the meetings are now up on FCAT's YouTube channel. If you don't see it, search for Conway Forest. Um, I'll include a, a link to that in the minutes. Um, Great idea. I will, note, I will note that the federal bipartisan $908 billion stimulus package, the latest, includes state aid, and that the Massachusetts budget was passed days afterward on Friday. Uh, it seems clear that there is sufficient support in Congress for state aid that FY21 and even FY22 will be much more manageable than expected. Uh, in insurance uh, news, um, Bob Armstrong and I met with the public safety officers who are or supervise personnel over the age of 70. They indicate that they would prefer to remain employed as usual. I have forwarded our five-year loss history to an insurance company called VFIS uh, who have no age limit. I've recently learned that Maya will support public, will ensure public safety employees over the age of 70 as well. And Bob and I are planning to continue our efforts toward a solution on a video call with them to see what they might offer. So that's progress on that front as well. And that's all I have. Question, Tom. How many um, employees yeah. do we have over the age of seventy? Two that I know of. Okay. So, for, I first, of all, I, I for, first of all, first of all, Tom, I, um, I, I, I thank you for sending out the insurance information to another carrier. Hopefully, that would get two different quotes for us for, for something like that. And so, um, if that's true, thank you. Um, and the, the other thing, just go, going back to the assessor's computer, um, <clears throat> you got to the end of the, uh, this month to get the CARES Act requests in. And we've got a lot of room uh, in our town uh, for that, uh, in our town's allocation of CARES money yet. So, yeah, so unfortunately, <laughs> it's, it's not an eligible category. And that's where. You know, there, there's been all these uh, national media stories over the past few days about how the whole rest of the country is approaching that and how all these uh, states and, and municipalities are funding their tourism department and funding this and funding their senior facilities and funding, making direct grants to restaurants in their area and doing all kinds of stuff that 
Um, you know, the, the same thing came up in the school. The, the school has a Chrome, has an annual Chromebooks thing. And uh, because of the pandemic, they wanted to get more Chromebooks for kids that don't, you know, uh, and, and especially some of the, the Wi-Fi cards for the kids that don't have that and this and that. But <clears throat> it turns out that um, the, all the vendors, the, since every other school is in the same, the, the vendors can't deliver the products before the end of December as the CARE Act requested or requires. And so, so because of that, that's not going to be funded by the CARES Act. My, my thing was as long, uh, um, that we should have fudged that a little bit. Um, when, when, you see, when you see what the other town, it's not fudging it. When you, the, the, it's just the, a more expansive interpretation. Uh, that's all that, that, that all, the, all these other communities are doing without any um, uh, blowback from the federal government. So, I, you know, I, we, we, it's, it's no, necessary. Yes, yeah. they it's the state government. Yeah, with the federal guidelines or whatever. I, but I don't know. There's a pot of money there, and it's going unused. And I know it's only 75% reimbursement, but that's a lot better than zero reimbursement. And no, the, the, the Chromebooks would have been 100%. Yeah. And in fact, we've already, we've already received the money for it, and we're going to have to turn it back. Oh, yeah, see, I, I was very much against that concept. <laughs> uh, I don't, but th but they're all afraid of an audit and this and that. I, yeah. I think he should be afraid of an audit. Uh, yeah, but when you see what everybody else is doing, you're like, wow, we're the only ones that self police to such a extent, um, whatever that that interpret it this way in such a way so that it harms us. Fiscally. Well, wait, Kill, are you suggesting that we could use CARES Act money to get these tablets for um, the assessors? That Absolutely. Absolutely. Requi re required because they couldn't get around, uh, you know, they, they couldn't get around in person and they need more computers. I, this, that's it. That's the extent of the analysis that people do. It's not, they don't do uh, uh, audits where they come into your town and make sure. There's no collateral audits on the thing. They don't. Well, I, I appreciate the sentiment, Phil, but it, but it 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 doesn't fit, and that's not what the tablet project was. So, uh, I I I do appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you do too much, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I also appreciate legality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what everybody keeps telling me. How about any new mail that came in? Do we get any mail? Uh, no. We, we got a lot of uh, calendars from Richie Neal. Stop by and get your calendar. <laughs> oh, and Bob, I, I need yeah. you to sign something. Yeah. I, I sent you something to sign like a week ago, and I need it. And I didn't do it? No. Nope. I, will, I will look for that immediately. It's the application yeah. for the emergency management planning grant. Okay. I'll find it. Don't be afraid to yell at me. That's good. How about any I just did. Thank you. Right, good. No, it's good. Any announcements? Um, yeah, just uh, just to be, if, if you're speaking with uh, the governor anytime soon, you want him to approve the budget that was submitted by the joint committee. Uh and but, but you know, but by the by the House and the Senate, that that number on school transportation is really big for us. So that, um, however, one, once that budget on Friday was passed and made it to the governor, I, the, I I've been trying to find out exactly what the number was that went to him, and I haven't been able to find that out for for that line item specifically. It was buried in like eight hundred pages, oh. and um. And I'm waiting for one of these, all these organizations that we belong to, to send out one of these emails that identifies where that number was located um, within that monstrosity of a budget that no human being can possibly go through to get actual information unless they're paid to do it. So, okay. But once I get that, once I get that number, I'll circulate a letter that says, Governor, please take please give us the more money rather than less money. So our next meeting, two weeks from today, six o'clock, 
by Zoom. Yep. And it will be in conjunction with the hearing. Well, so I don't know if anyone noticed, but yeah. we did we did have a, a hearing. The notice for that hearing was in today's recorder, and it'll be in next week's recorder. Um, just just to note that uh, your next meeting should probably be the site visit, uh, which which should be posted, um, even if uh, there's nothing, even if there's no deliberation, we should still post it. So once you know the time, just let me know, uh, preferably 48 hours in advance. Wait, say that our next meeting should be the the site visit to uh, right to, the to Ken Pleasance. If we're not going to so, deliberate, so, does it still have to be a uh, uh, an official meeting? Uh, it is a meeting. Okay. Uh, be yeah. Best. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but, but you're yeah you're not uh, all right. I understand. So um, once I schedule that meeting with Ron, um, I'll let you know, and then you can post that publicly so that anyone else can attend. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, forty eight hours in advance would be just ducky. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I have it scheduled. Great. Great. Just, Thank you. Just ducky, really? <laughs> so do we still have reasons to go into executive session? We, we, we put this off from la from two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. And we, we, okay. So we're going to go into executive session for reason number six dealing with the purchase of 69 main street and we're going to go into executive session for reason number seven uh, oh to approve some minutes of earlier uh, er, earlier executive session so two separate reasons so we need to do this by roll call and then we will adjourn directly from executive session so, Erica, you say aye? I say aye. And Phil? Yes. And I say aye. So, we are now in executive session.